YouTube, uh, this is Vargas, recording live from the Vargas Vault. Uh, back again with an awesome level of over 8,000! <laughs> that, uh, with another pickup video. And, uh, it's, well, I, I, there's a difference between the time that I get to record the videos and then I get to upload them. So I don't know how long it's been since, uh, it's probably gonna be a week since I uploaded the last pickup videos, but three weeks since then. I don't know, time's kind of weird when, you know, when you're doing YouTube videos because you, you get the stuff, then record it, and then you have to edit it and, and post it at a later date. So I don't know how many weeks it's been since the last uh, series of pickup videos. Uh, I do know that uh, as of the time of this video, I uploaded a wrestling DVD collection update video. Uh, really, really happy that I was able to find some wrestling DVDs because it, it's really hard to come by. Uh, you you would think that with the network it would be a lot easier to uh, you know for people to get rid of their DVDs to sell them because they have the network but I have not been able to come across that many DVDs until recently but uh, this video is going to be about stuff that I got uh, from Movie Street Bazaar stuff that I got uh, from a flea market a friend that he was selling some of his DVDs a friend that he gave me some DVDs and uh, more Movie Street Bazaar goodness so let's get started. Uh, first off, I uh, got from Movie Freak Bazaar, Alice in Chains Unplug. Uh, the Unplug series and MTV was really cool, you know, back when MTV was about music and not reality shows, as they are now. Just have to get, there we go. And uh, the Unplug series was, uh, I think, uh, a very, very cool concept. Um, I have the DVD for Nirvana Unplug, but I want to get the CD. Uh, and now I have Alice in Chains. Uh, I would like to get the corn unplugged as well, but I not I have yet to come across that one. Also, to add to my uh, movie soundtrack collection, because I like uh, buying the soundtracks for uh, movies, I was able to get The Hobbit, uh, the, Desol the Desolation of Smog soundtrack. It's a two-disc set. Oh, almost broke it there. Uh, disc one and disc two. So these are pretty cool. I, I like adding stuff to, uh, especially soundtracks, to my CD collection. Uh, so that's that's pretty epic. Uh, at a flea market, I picked up some anime. Just like wrestling, it's really, really hard to come by anime. Uh, again, uh, you can, people have told me that if I just want to get wrestling and anime, I could just buy it online. It's a lot easier, but I, I like uh, you know, to actually hunt them in the wild. I like to be able to see it. You know, see that the disc isn't scratched, because uh, I've heard from a lot of people that buy online that uh, when they get the disc, it's missing the cover art, or it's missing the inserts, or sometimes the disc is all really scratched up. By buying it uh, myself, you know, um, even though I, I take longer to get the stuff I want, uh, I'm able to look at it and, you know, uh, buy it before it, it you know, um, I can inspect it before I buy it, so it's not uh, all scratched up, but first anime I got is Marriage. Uh, I have not seen this one, this is a total blind buy. Uh, I have not seen it, but the subject's about uh, this guy that uh, wants to get married, but you know, all his, all his friends are getting married, and he's dubious about popping the question. So, it might be, it might be a bittersweet anime, but we'll see. Then I picked up uh, Megazone 23 Part 1. Very briefly remember seeing this one. I, I I think I might be confusing it with something else, but uh, it looks like uh, to be a far future anime, and it's from the eighties. So yeah, I'm definitely definitely gonna get it. It's uh yeah from a uh, nineteen eighty five. So super happy to get anime in any form. So that's pretty cool. Uh, a movie that I've passed up on numerous occasions and. Because I, I always think I already have it, and then I check my list, and I, uh, I realize I don't have it. But a friend of mine from work was selling some uh, duplicate DVDs, and I bought from him District 9. A uh, sci-fi movie that a lot of people say it's, is, is really good. But, but again, I, I, I've never actually... I've seen it, but I've never actually gotten around to buying it. Because I, I always thought... Every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I already have that one. And then when I get home, I'm like, ah, damn it, I don't have it. Uh, so this time I, I checked my, my quick, uh, spreadsheet and I realized I didn't have it, so I picked it up. Also picked up the first season of Mad Men. 
I, I've caught a couple of episodes of this, but, you know, it's, it's a TV series and I got it really cheap, so why not? Uh, picked up the Little Rascals movie that came out, I, I want to say in the 90s? Does it say? Yeah, 94. Uh, the remake to the, you know, Little Rascals TV series. Uh, briefly remember seeing this, uh, but my wife told me that she actually liked it. Uh, if you follow my channel, you know that I am notorious for double dipping and rebuying, uh, the same movie on multiple formats. Uh, the single disc, double disc, then the special collector's edition, and now with Blu-ray, well, if it's a movie I think, I feel it's worth it, or it has, uh, special features that the other versions that I own don't have, I'll pick it up. And, uh, a friend of mine was saying, was selling the, this Blu-ray DVD combo pack, uh, it's brand new, still sealed, uh, but he didn't want it, and I got Jaws on Blu-ray. Uh, I already own Jaws, I own the Anniversary Edition that has the two discs with the documentary, but uh, this one has more special features, so I, yeah, I had to, I had to buy it, because it's Jaws, it's like, it's one of the, 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 the most iconic movies in all of cinema, and I personally really, really like Jaws, I like the, the, the music, I like the setting, I like the, the mood. Uh, a lot of people nowadays get frustrated that you don't see the shark until uh, almost at the end, but that's what makes it really cool. So, I own it now on Blu-ray. Uh, also, a friend of mine, uh, he upgraded, he bought this movie first, but then he was able to get his hands on the Target exclusive Digibook with the lenticular cover. So he told me, like, you know what, uh, I bought, I upgraded to this much better version, do you want the, the Steelbook? And I was like, yeah, because I... I, I I was hoping for a uh, extended cut or a Snyder cut, but it's been announced that that's never gonna happen. So uh, I, I was like, I was gonna I was gonna buy it anyway, but I'm super happy I was able to get the Steel Book, and that's Justice League, the Justice League Steel Book with the comic book artwork and you know, the same artwork on black and white on the back, and it's the uh, DVD Blu-ray combo pack with the digital copy. Which I'm still thinking how I'm going to do a contest to give out the digital copies because uh, they don't work on my neck of the woods. So yeah, but picked up the steel book, Justice League. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, for my wife from Movie Freak Bazaar, I picked up my big fat Greek life. Uh, my wife loves my big fat my big fat Greek wedding, and uh, we didn't. Uh, get to watch it on theater, but uh, when it came out on home media, I bought for her my Big Fat Greek Wedding 2. But this is a TV series, a six-episode TV series, with which for the most part brings back all of the cast, uh, except the the main guy that's played by a different person, and they they changed the names uh, for some reason. I don't know why, but they changed the names, which is kind of weird. Uh, but this takes place after the first movie, so it's a nice. Uh, segue between the first one, uh, then this, and then the second one, so, so yeah, uh, this is pretty cool for my wife, then, uh, I picked up the unrated version of Mirrors, uh, this is a, uh, an American remake of, I believe, a Korean movie, as they do, because, uh, you know, they, uh, they were doing this, uh, ever since The Ring, they, uh, they, they, they kind of like, every, uh, Asian movie that would come out, uh, the Hollywood would be like, well, we can remake that because no one knows about it. But if you're a horror buff, you know about it. So it's kind of weird. And in comparison, the American versions uh, are, are kind of cheap Im imitations of the original Korean or Japanese version. So so I don't know why. I mean, I, I get why they did. So it's all about the money. But uh, they could have worked a little harder at making them better. Like, like for example, the first Grudge and uh, The Ring are awesome. They are great, uh, but other than that, the other movies that have come out, there's there's some like uh, Dark Water, uh, I like, but some uh, that's like a Pulse Pulse is the originalist brother, but uh, Mirrors I picked up because it's again it's an American remake of a uh, a Korean film, but I like uh, a particular kill in this one, and it has this chick that's uh, that's you know taking a, a bath, and then uh, her reflection kind of is like looking at her, and the reflection goes like does like this, and then opens up her jaw, and the chick's like, oh, what the hell, and then her jaw starts splitting up, it's very, very gruesome, uh, 
Um, so I really liked that kill, so that's why I wanted this one, because it was like, I was like, genuinely surprised by that kill, that like, that, that was pretty cool. Now, a friend of mine, another friend of mine, uh, is upgrading his, uh, DVD collection to Blu-ray. Uh, just like me, she's a big fan of the Marvel comics, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, and, uh, he bought some DVDs, but now he wants to get, uh, the Steelbooks. Or the Blu-rays because they have better special features and artwork. So uh, he was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna upgrade everything. Uh, do you want the movies that you're missing? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I like special features too. But if you're gonna get rid of them, uh, you know, I'll I'll buy them off you. But he gave them uh, to me for free, and uh, he got me. Well, he gave to me Captain America: The Winter Soldier. The only bummer is that's in Spanish, and uh, yeah, I. I with a few exceptions, I, I like my American DVDs to be in American, if that makes sense. Uh, also, it's the DVD, so it doesn't have that uh, any special features. just has a small uh, documentary and a digital book. But it's a kick-ass movie. I freaking love this movie. Uh, this was really, really cool. And uh, he also gave me uh, Captain America Civil War, which is also freaking cool. Uh, I actually enjoyed all three of the Captain America movies. Uh, some people I know didn't much care for the first one, but uh, I freaking loved the first one. I thought it was really, really cool. Uh, the Winter Soldier was freaking amazing. That that one was even better. And Civil War was also really cool. So they've just been escalating really cool. It has the iconic scene of uh, Iron Man shooting his repulsive blasts at the Captain America shield. Just really, really cool. And that fight scene and the introduction of Spider-Man, I was like, Ah, oh, so cool. So that that was pretty amazing. Uh, for my daughter, I, I finally got a copy of Coco. Now, uh, in the United States, uh, Coco right now is uh, the Blu-ray DVD, Blu uh, DVD combo pack. Uh, we saw it at 30 bucks at one place and $24.99 at another. It's kind of expensive, but uh, on the credit card that I have here in Mexico, uh, I have accumulated a couple of points. Uh, and which I could use to pay, you know, uh, part of it, part of the the amount of the uh, of the cost of the of, of the movie. So it, it ended up costing me ten bucks, and it's the Blu-ray DVD combo. Since this is a Mexican theme movie, uh, I don't mind that it's in Spanish. It still has the same special features that the American version has, and you know, it's it's kind of a, cur a cultural pride thing that uh, this is in Spanish because it's. In, you know, it's it's uh, based on Mexican traditions, and this is of course the uh, Oscar uh, award-winning movie that uh, I freaking loved. Just really, really loved this movie. Uh, the themes and everything. If I remember correctly, I think I, I picked this as my number one favorite movie of last year. So just beautiful movie. Uh, from Movie Freak Bazaar. Uh, he had his, his weekly sale, and, um, I was able to snag some really, really good things, uh, at least, uh, cool to me. Uh, I, I've been trying, like, crazy to get the Bruce Lee, uh, movies, because, uh, I, I really like the Bruce Lee movies, even though he only did, like, six movies, I think, before his, uh, unfortunate death. Uh, those six movies are freaking amazing, and, uh, I only have A Game of Death, and recently I picked up Enter the Dragon, but... Uh, Movie Freak Bazaar had, uh, three of his six movies, uh, so I was able to snag, uh, Bruce Lee, Return of the Dragon, and this is the one where he fights, uh, Chuck Norris, so Bruce Lee's the only person that can claim that he beat up Chuck Norris, so, really, really cool, then, uh, picked up Fists of Fury, freaking awesome. And lastly, the Chinese connection. So freaking amazing! I think I think this is the one that was remade uh, with Jet Li. So now I'm only missing uh, the Big Boss, and I'll have all of Bruce Lee's movies, uh, with the exception of of the ones uh, that involve his, uh, you know, like his doppelgangers and uh, the whole wave of people that were using the Bruce Lee name after his death capitalize on, on the Bruce Lee name, but that was pretty cool, uh, I'm one movie away from ha having all of his movies, so, uh, that's freaking amazing, also, I've been looking like crazy for this movie, because I have the 1988 remake, 
uh, with amazing practical effects, but I wanted the original one, and I finally, thanks to Movie Freak Bazaar, was able to get the 1958 The Blob with Steve McQueen. Uh, this is not the best uh, version of this. I've seen a really cool anniversary uh, edition with special features. This is just the movie, but, you know, I, I've had so much trouble getting this one. It's, uh... Uh, this one and Invasion of the Body Snatchers uh, and the original Fly are three of the old sci-fi movies that I have not been able to acquire. Uh, super happy to ch check one off the list. Now I just need Invasion of the Body Snatchers and the first Fly. The original Fly, I'm sorry. Uh, for my daughter, picked up Minions, the Minion movie. Uh, really like this one. I, I didn't think the Minions would work at their own movies, but, uh, you know, because the Minions are great in small doses. And, uh, but they work better with, you know, characters, and when I heard that they were going to do a Minion movie, I was like, oh man, you know, they're, they're fun, but they speak their own language, so it's going to be hard to understand them. But thankfully, they realized that, and they integrated uh, human characters into this, and uh, Scarlet Overkill uh, was voiced in Mexico by Talia, and uh, so I thought that was pretty cool, and she did a really good job. So this was a lot, of, this movie was a lot of fun, and, then, and of course, it, it showcases... It kind of contradicts itself because the first uh, Despicable Me says that the Minions were a product of genetic experimentation. But in this one, uh, they've been around since the dawn of time, so it kind of contradicts itself that way. But uh, I, I really, really enjoyed this movie. Uh, for my wife, because I, I'm sure she's never seen this version of it, I picked up a 1940 edition of Pride and Prejudice. My wife is a huge Jane Austen fan. Uh, and she really likes the Kara Knightley version and the TV series version from the BBC, but I, I'm 100% sure she's never seen this one. So I am uh, tickled pink to actually show her a version of her favorite movie that she's probably never seen. Uh, for Movie Fruit Bazaar, I also picked up True Romance, the director's cut. Um, I vaguely remember this movie, but it stars Christian Slater and Patricia Arquette. Uh, very vaguely remember, but I do remember it was written... Uh, or at least originally written by Quentin Tarantino, but I'm pretty, I don't remember, my memory fails me sometimes, I don't remember if it was this one, or uh, if, uh, did he write Natural Born Killers? I remember, I remember him saying that he wrote a, a, a screenplay for a movie, because uh, this one's very similar to Natural, natural uh, Born Killers, no, is it, well, it's a little bit, because it follows these two characters going on a spree, and Natural Born Killers is the same thing. But uh, I remember him saying in the interview that they, they butchered his original idea. Uh, but now I don't remember. Again, the, the thing with so many movies, unfortunately, and me getting older, is that some, uh, sometimes the, the movie plot's kind of mixed in and, and the information is, is kind of weird. But if someone out there knows the, the, the story behind this, please leave it in the comments. Because I, I, it says here that it was written by Quentin Tarantino. But I'm, I'm, I vaguely remember him him being upset that he had delivered the script and it, it was butchered by the production company. Uh, then, because it's a Disney movie, even though I don't particularly like this version, I picked up Inspector Gadget with uh, Matthew Broderick. Some really, really bad early CGI. and uh, But I didn't like it because I, I didn't like what they did with Claw. Uh, like, they literally gave him a claw. And in the TV show... You, you would only see just a hand. It, it was called claw because you would only see a, a claw, you know, stri stro uh, stroking the cat. And uh, I'll get you next time, Gadget. Next time. That was pretty freaking cool. So I was expecting that to, uh, you know, translate to this live action. I was not really happy that they chose Matthew Broderick as Inspector Gadget. But then I saw what they did with Claw and I was like, oh, that sucks. But it's a Disney movie, so it'll go to the Disney pile. And a blind horror movie by uh, Death Tunnel, uh, Your Initiation into Terror. Uh, I just thought the cover looked really cool with the, again, uh, if you follow my channel, I'm a, I like masks, and I like the, the mask here, the, the gas mask. Uh, it's about uh, five co-eds that uh, are, you know, challenged to go into a haunted sanitarium that uh, treated the uh, tuberculosis, I think it was. So a lot of people died, so it's, like, super haunted. And uh, these people, like, most, like, uh, Grave Encounters, they go to record into this, uh, well, in Grave Encounters, they go to record 
to the uh, in a, a sanitarium. These people are just left there and they have to spend the night. And of course, uh, by the looks of it, uh, madness ensues. So a lot of ghosts and stuff. So yeah, that was the pickup video. Uh, got relatively a very very nice amount of movies. Like always, I I like to recommend the standouts of the collection. And uh, I'm going to go with two because they are awesome. Uh, first one is Coco. Uh, I can't recommend this movie enough. It's, it's a great movie with a great message about the importance of family. And my daughter just loves this movie. And the other one I'm going to recommend is The Return of the Dragon. Uh, the, the, the fight between Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee is just amazing. And uh, this, is, this is great, great martial arts movies. So... That was the pickup video, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching and uh, for your continued support to my channel. Uh, until I see you all again, this was Vargas uh, in the Vargas Vault. Thanking you all and signing out.